Hey, what is up guys? Today is a really big episode. We start replacing pretty much everything all around with our new um, UI Atlas things. We only create four new icons, but we have a lot of things to do. And here they are. They're really hard to see right now. It's just placeholder stuff again. But uh, if we just go through the whole game really quickly, as you can tell, we've changed the icon down there. We actually put a um, highlight animation on it as well. And we've changed every single menu. So that's our uh, ability menu. That is our research menu, that is our loot menu, everything is like highlighted now and you can actually have some kind of feedback to it, which is great. That is the stats menu, we've added the little icon we made as well, war table is just plain simple, and there's also this share center menu. So that is pretty much what we're going to be doing today guys, and without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so we are back. Let's actually check out what we need to do in this one. So, um, we are going to check inside of our actual game. So, let me just quickly boot it. And we're going to keep track of everything we need to do from here on. So, I'm talking about the old um, Atlas thing. Let's actually give it a look. So, we do need those little icons. So, a up arrow and a down arrow. Now, I think these we can only do one arrow and just flip it. So, uh, let's actually put it somewhere in here. That's the background, that's fine. Uh, let's go with icons or button icons. And we can be putting them somewhere else, so say about here at the end. I'll just create a new guides, so view guides vertical. We'll do a hundred minus 12.5. Oops. 87.5. That was easy, I don't know why I used a calculator. Anyway, <laughs> um, Oh, I've created down there. My bad. Vertical, 87.5. Okay, so here we go. So we got four little space here we can use. We are actually going to start by creating our arrow. Now, um, again, placeholder stuff, as always. So I'll be quickly just taking a custom shape, I think. And they do have arrows in here. I'll be using that for this very icon. It's really simple, so I'll just go ahead and just drag and drop this thing, like so, maybe put it upward. And this is going to be it for now, of course. I think I'll be redrawing that, actually I will be redrawing this thing eventually. And we'll just type in arrow. Um, something else we're going to be needing as well for the game is also some kind of plus sign for these buttons, some kind of plus sign that goes uh, beating the button just to say level up. So again, we're going to make a plus sign, really simple thing. Do we have a custom shape for that? I don't think we do. Yeah, we don't, so let's actually just do it really quickly. I'll just select something, put a background color, duplicate that layer and just flip it like this. That's going to be my plus sign, it's really straightforward. And we can apply it here. Maybe make it a little bit smaller, like so. All right, next one. What else do we need? We are going to need. Hmm. I am not quite sure. I don't think we need the use button. Um, having these little icons up there as link would be cool as well. So maybe we need a uh, that one brings you to the page, the Facebook page. So we need some kind of Facebook sign, Facebook icon, and this one brings me to uh, the Google Play. So maybe like a little star to uh, insist, not insist, but to um, make our user understand that we'd like to have a rating. So let's go ahead and just put these two things in there. We need a Facebook F, so I'll just do a small F like that. Whatever font I'm using, I think it actually looks okay. Or not. You could find an actual, um, just something on, on Google that could work fine. Something without copyrights, of course. You don't want to be having troubles with copyright. That always sucks. And let's actually go for a custom shape again. This time we are going to use... Doo -doo -doo. Is it a custom shape? No, it's an actual polygon tool. And then I'm going to click 
and old and I get to do a star here but I don't think you guys get to do that by default what I've did is um, I went in this little gear sign and I just check star like that and I am going to rotate it like this and just have it here so we just added four little icons here they're really simple icons as you can tell but they're gonna do the job just fine now I'm going to save this and um, let me just rename this to star rasterize a layer save the PNG file sorry the PSD file and let me just rename this as well so save the PSD file go under save as and we are going to re overwrite our UI atlas alright so as always we're gonna go ahead and just start cutting those in our sprite sheet editor and let's actually open it up sprite editor and let's start cutting so here is my first one now in terms of um, the sizing we know that this is a 128 by 128 the Y is 896 I think and uh, yeah and as for the X we want to put that on 1024 minus 128 that's 896 so 896 we have the first one here now I wish I could just duplicate there has to be a way to just du duplicate that stuff but I haven't found it yet and um, what you can do is just have the size just type in the size and then just zoom in completely and just match it like that that's gonna work as well or you know what, what you could even do if you really don't want to mess around with these is you can just simply go with your eyes and it's still gonna end up having a really nice result in the end but I'm really picky about that kind of stuff so here it is apply and we are now good to go and start implementing that so a lot of implementation is gonna happen in this episode and uh, we're not only going to implement what we just did but also a lot of the other menus such as um, these little icons at the very bottom here let's actually go ahead and modify them the first thing I'll do is make sure I don't see this reset save confirmation so I'll just toggle it off for now and for these buttons what icon could we be using for the buttons? so let's actually give it a try um, now if I turn off the buttons as you can tell we do have a background and I'll just get rid of it or maybe not get rid of it um, maybe the background okay so if we turn off every single one of these we end up with only the background of buttons which is just a panel what I'd like to do is actually have a rectangle shape like this around it and maybe even make it a little bit bigger so maybe 500 by 150 and now the buttons in here we're going to toggle them back on and just have something on top of it like this should I be using the second one I'll just go and use the first one for now and then we can modify them if we feel like it so the board goes in here now the last image is obviously something that doesn't have a space to breathe um, as of right now but as you can tell it does work now so under buttons what I'll do is I'll give it some kind of padding because the uh, horizontal layout group has a, paid, a padding feature that you can just simply as you can tell just give it some kind of little space here so I'll just give it a padding of 10 on every single axis and we end up with something like that you can also give it some spacing that would be good so in this case 5 would do the job and um, maybe even make this bigger so 550 and we end up with this kind of result which doesn't look too bad actually and um, like like we've did for the reset save we are going to add highlighted sprites to this so for the achievement I go under button this is going to be the sprite swap and I'm going to be using the UI Atlas 3 now these buttons are never going to be disabled so we don't we don't really need to put something in the disabled uh, sprite and finally we've got the reset save here and here we go let's give this a try you could be changing the font color to white as well if you wish I'll just go and do that really quickly so I can see it next episode is gonna be about font by the way 
Um, so let's boot this from our preloader. And it just feels so much more responsive now. All right. What should we be doing next? What we could be doing next is actually tackle this um, unable to connect. So pretty much just the pop-up manager thing. If we go under the preloader, we have the pop-up manager. Here it is. Now, right now, it's not you can't really see it. So we're quickly going to create a new canvas and just put it in there. So we just have a look at the thing. OK, so we have our pop-up manager. We don't need to modify this thing in the back. Um, the only thing we really do need to modify, if I just move it up to have a look, is uh, the inside of it, it's the window. Now the window, I'll just take it, I'll make sure it's really opaque. And I'll just put it on this rectangle shape. Maybe give it like 300 in width. And 150 in height. The title is fine, everything is fine. I just, actually, this is perfect. I'm, I'm simply going to leave it like that. And uh, we can then remove it from the canvas, go back to what we had. Let's hit play, see if it does make sense. And it does, I think it looks good. All right. Um, the size of the font might be, should be a little bit bigger, I think. Maybe we can just rescale pretty much everything that goes in there. So I'll go back, create another canvas again, just put it in here. Also make sure you remove the event system, we don't really need that anymore. And um, if we just make sure everything is really just the good size, it looks big here, but whenever we hit play, it actually doesn't. That kind of butters me for some reason. Well, let's actually find out why. Okay, so it turns out that it is because uh, we don't have the same scaling in the canvas, and that's definitely normal. So I'm going to go over here under a scale with screen size and we'll just go and say uh, something like 640 by 960. I think that's the actual size we're using in the other scene. And uh, from there we can actually go ahead and just scale it up more. So we are going to... That's fine, we just assume the whole size. Now as for the width, maybe just increase that to 500 and the height, 250 minimum would be great. Then we can play with the title a little bit. The title is going to be bigger than this, of course. Oh, it's on best fit, my bad. I'm gonna remove the best fit. Just put a height of 100, the width of 500, which is the exact same thing as the size of the actual thing. Maybe 400, so it doesn't actually like overlaps with the little borders. And uh, yeah, something like this, actually. And we can go back to best fit now and reduce the height. It's really up to you. You just mess around with this until you're you're feeling satisfied with the result. And uh, the description, description, we just make it bigger again. So like this in width and like that in height. It's on best fit as well, so it's just going to be assuming the size of the region we give. And I think we're good to go now. Let's actually bring this outside again. And I'm going to leave my canvas there in case I need to play on it again. All right, let's hit play. Have a look at this in the game. And it does make a little bit more sense. It's using our actual icons now. It's not using the default stuff. So we are pretty much good to go. Um, now the splash screen, I don't need to modify that because I'm going to get rid of that panel as well. Um, that's cool. Now all of these, there is a lot of handwork to do with all of these, of course. And we can give them multiple not multiple but different colors every time so what I feel like doing is tackle the special stuff first before we go into the more manual labor part of this uh, tutorial so here is what we are going to do we're gonna go under UI root and then find the one that is open right now that is the ability menu we're gonna put that on zero and uh, let's actually have a look at the share center first because the share center has this thing up here that I need to actually just put icons in. So we have a like button that is right about there. What I'm going to do with this like button is I'm actually going to create a square around it. So this kind of square. It is now a square. Same thing goes for the rate button on this side. It's the same exact square and now as for the splash chart I'll just I'll temporarily just disable it so we can actually see what we're doing. 
um, beneath the actual like button I will right click add a new image make sure it's centered right now it's perfectly centered and we can go ahead and just put uh, I think that's a Facebook link is it that's the like button okay and the like button um, to puts you on the Facebook page so that's perfectly fine we can resize it if we want so maybe have a width of 300 by 300 or 200 by 200 okay let's go back with 150 150 uh, something of the sort, right button, same exact thing, you right click, add a new image, put whatever size you wish, and we'll just put the star in there. That looks fine to me. And uh, like I said, the splash image, we're going to turn it back on when we actually have something that uh, has alpha on it. Okay, so thank you for playing this game, blah blah blah, that's cool. Um, of course we need to modify these things and also the button would you like to learn about this game same thing we need to put a border around that as well but let's quickly just try with the actual the bigger picture here the actual this thing so what if we try with some kind of rectangle shape like within or a square shape and we've put the alpha back on full this is the kind of result we get. Now this is obviously not opaque enough, this is obviously not something we can't use, but this might, or in the worst case scenario we can use the, the bigger one, but I don't like the bigger one that much. If we just give it a nice uh, share center color, which I guess would be yellowish, <laughs> it might actually do the job just fine. And we can give it a bigger size here, so 515 width, and maybe 770 in height we can go ahead and just move our things a little bit so that's going to be 30 in minus 30 rate button same thing 30 minus 30 the splash hearts remain at the same exact place and uh, the very button at the end the playlist button is gonna be bumped up a little bit higher and uh, talking about this guy this guy needs to have a different background as well so let's check what we can give him this actually looks good I'll just use the UI atlas I'll actually just turn this into a button basically so I'll be using this maybe have the orange color on it no that's too awful let's go with something else okay let's just go with a simple white color and uh, on it, since it's a button, I'm going to be putting that on sprite swap and just use the UI Atlas 3 whenever we highlight or click on it. Oh, and going back on the um, actual icon buttons for the links, what I'd like to do is actually change that for a more opaque thing. So this actually looks good to me. That's for the Facebook page, of course. Now for the Google Play page, I will, of course, click on this one again and I will change the color for a more Google Play-esque color which I think is greenish in my head. I don't know, it doesn't really matter. But as you can tell, we have now have, um, we now have deeper color, I could say. Okay. All right, so we pretty much just took care of the share center. Let's close it down, go on the, um, the next one, the tower stats menu. Do we need to do anything in here? Yeah, we do need to add the little plus sign and also change, well, the whole thing. <laughs> so uh, first off, let's start with this one. The first image on top of the tower stats menu, we are going to be using the um, highest opacity one, why not? Just bump it back up at this amount. And what would be a good color for that? I'm not quite sure. We can be using a uh, some kind of, I don't know, blue. <laughs> I'm using too many colors in this game. This is obviously something really bad. And uh, if we just zoom on it, let's just assume that's gonna be our color. If we just zoom on it, we have the currency panel up here. I don't think we actually need to have it there, so we're just going to remove that image. Now as far as the stat container panel goes, we also do not need to have it here, so I'll just remove it. And um, since our new UI has like this little spacing on the left here, we can actually go on our stat container panel and add some padding. So maybe like a padding of 5 or 10, depending on what looks better. I'll just go with 10, and I'll do that on each side. Do we need to do something at the very bottom? I think we do at least five. And here it is, we just squeezed it a little bit more. Nice, if we go on the side panel now, do we need to have actually a side panel? I don't think we do need to have a side panel. Let's remove it on both. 
and then finally every single little stat container on its own. Um, now I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing with these. Let's actually just try out stuff. I can't really see. Okay, so we're going to make sure the uh, scaling part of it is not messed up. Okay, so it's actually really hard to see what's going on here. So let me just bump up the color a little bit. And um, let's go with something that would make sense. We could use the second one, so the UI Atlas 3, which is the 50% opacity. And um, this looks fine. Do we need any other color in there? I don't think we do. Oh, well, maybe some kind of like dark color would be great here in contrast to the light color of the background. So it's really up to you again. Um, definitely won't go for yellow. Greenish sounds cool. I'll just use this greenish color. All right. So here's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be selecting the whole thing now. So all of these plus, if I hit control, all of these as well. Go under color. Change it to whatever I just chose. And is there an off on the first one? It doesn't seem to be having an alpha. So let's choose them again. Change the source image for UI Atlas 3. And they should be like taking their space again like they used to. All right. Um, in terms of the color of the text, we also need to change that a little bit. So I'll just do it manually by opening up all of these guys and choosing the current level holding control. I just choose every single one of them. You can see them appear on the right side and just change the color to a white. Now this looks like some kind of poker table for some reason. Since they're all open like that, we are going to choose the level up button. So that's the thing over here. And now this is where we get to choose what we want to have in here. So I was thinking about using the UI Atlas four or maybe the two, the 50% opacity square. And inside of it, right click, add a new image and we add the plus sign. Now, of course, let's just make sure it fits. So maybe 50% and that plus sign can be greenish. Another kind of greenish. Now something simple like that it doesn't have to be that complicated and I'll just duplicate it in inside of every single level up thing, level up button. And let's see if it does make sense. I don't think it does make sense right now. We're going to have to modify it again. So um, let's just quickly put them all inside the level up. Since we only got eight, it shouldn't be that long. We don't really need the prefab for this. And here we go. So now we've got eight little plus sign. They're just on top of the wrong thing. So we're going to go in, in every single image we put and change the position to zero, zero. Just like this. And we're done with the first row. Let's go with the second one, and here we are. All right, we can now choose every single level up image and put it on the appropriate uh, sprite, which is in this case UI Atlas 2, I believe. It's either two, the first one. The first one actually looks good too. It's really up to you. Decide on which one you like. I think I'll actually be choosing the first one. And uh, yeah, I'll actually be choosing the first one. And if we click on something, if we click on the button, I'll just modify all of them at the same time. Um, the target graphic is of course going to be, leave it like it is. And the highlighted graphics is going to be the second one, like so. Okay, so we've did a lot of modification. Let's actually go have a look at this in the game. So this looks cool, this looks cool. Yep, 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 yep. Um, we have the share center, which is down there. It looks a little bit better, of course. Now this is highlighted when I put my cursor on it. This is not highlighted. We might want to do that so it actually reflects and gives some kind of feedback to the player. And then if we head over to the tower stats, which is I think right here, we have all of these options right there. And um, for some reason, we haven't modified this, the actual color of the text. That's weird. Oh wait, we did modify the color of the text, but our code actually overwrites it because it changes color whenever we have a uh, max level so if we just try it with, say, luck, and I think the luck goes up to level 50, I believe. 
it does change to a green thingy and it says max. Okay, so this is going to work. I'll just have to modify the code later on. Um, but yeah, this works. Nice, let's keep going. We've got a lot of work to do still. Under the UI root, the tower stats menu is now completed. Let's put that on zero. The war table menu, we can um, quickly do it. So war table menu is this thing. Let's just put it on, say, the UI atlas four. We can bump up the opacity a little bit. And this one feels like it's gonna be not purplish, but not red. Yellow. Okay, I don't know, just white. Pure white, that's good. And uh, inside of it, do we have an actual horizontal layer group? We do have a layout group, so we can just put a padding on it now. Let's go with 20 and 20. Spacing? Yeah, sure, we can add a spacing of like 5. And uh, yeah, so that's that's really it just for the difficulty menu, not difficulty, the uh, war table menu. Since we don't have the graphic that goes in there yet, uh, the research, research tab. Okay, this one is a little bit messed up. So let's jump right into it. So the first image we have is this one in the back, which is obviously um, kind of weird because we do have another one right here. So one of them is going to be gone and it's going to be the, uh, the first on top of the research menu. It doesn't have to be gone, we just have to do the show mask graphic, we uncheck it. So we make sure it just doesn't appear. The image needs to be there so we can use a mask on it, but we don't really need to see it. So on the research panel we can then go ahead and just put whichever uh, fits the best. I think square would actually look better on this one. Um, I don't know, you just have to check your corners and how it looks with your corners. Now I'll just bump up the opacity of it a little bit. Uh, of course, we, we have a few things of uh, in terms of resizing to do, like the text. The text needs to change. Maybe put it at position minus 30, minus 20, and the research list. Research list is actually a little bit messed up right now because if, I don't know if you realize, but whenever we click on it, it actually gets bumped back up over here. And that mess up our menu a little bit, so we'll try to figure out why after just resizing it a little bit. So on the research panel or on the research list, I'll just put a bigger padding of like 20 here and a bigger padding on the right side as well, which leads us to resize the inside of it. Uh, we have the research container here that we need to change. I was thinking about putting it on something with really low alpha like this, but then it doesn't look really good so let's just win. Let's just use the one with the 50% um, opacity, and it's really hard to see your icons on there. So I'll just change the color of that to like grayish, gray blackish, and I'll lower that a little bit so I can see better. Since this is white, we're gonna be needing some kind of way to contrast with the background. Um, it's either we turn this into a more gray color like this or we put the background into a more gray color, but I like this actually, so I'll keep it. The icon is fine, the research description is fine, duration, same thing. Uh, the research progress now is something we need to fix a little bit, so we're gonna be adding a bigger um, margin. On the right side, we'll say 20, and on the progress bar, we'll reduce the width to like 440, like this. All right, now let's tackle the button. The button is the same exact thing as every other button. We just put, say, the first UI atlas on it. And uh, we put the swap sprite. Choose the highlighted color. It's the UI atlas number two or three, depending if it's more like a square or rectangle shape. In this this um, actual settings, I can say it's an actual square. I know it's a little bit more wide, but still. Okay, so something of the sort. We can go ahead and just hit apply on this. And hopefully it did apply it on our in-game thing as well. We'll find out later on. So the research menu, that is completed. Um, if we just forget about the bug for a moment, it's completed. Now the loot menu, again, another one uh, that is going to take a little bit of time. So let's check out the background. Again, we're going to be using the one that is 
square or rectangle, it's up to you, I'll be using the square in this case, put the opacity a little bit to the max actually, <laughs> and uh, let's see what we need and what we don't. So the description over here is a panel. I can get rid of that panel, I don't really need it. Description however is going to be lowered a little bit to say minus 20 in position Y, and as for the loot panel, again I don't know if we do need it, we don't need really to show the graphics, so over here we are going to uncheck show mask graphic. And then we've got the loot list, this one has a, um, has a real background behind it, and I think we're going to keep this one actually. Let's just open up a loot container for a moment and uh, have a look at what we can do to make this look better. We can be using the full-on opacity UI Atlas 5, put a darker color like we said a little bit earlier. With a full opacity, that'd be cool. So maybe like a grayish color, go back to the UI Atlas 3 and that, that's actually going to work fine. So I like that quite a lot. Um, here is what we are going to be doing. We're going to be choosing every single loot container like this. So choose the first one, shift click on the last. We're going to put the UI Atlas number 3 in here and change the color again to something of the sort, alpha maxed out. And uh, yeah, this is actually going to look better. Now we could of course be changing the font color of every of those, but I don't need to do that right now. I don't think I do need to do that. Um, the next thing we need to do, and that's I guess the biggest thing we have to do, is put a icon inside every single one of those. And we got 13 times 2, that's 26 icon. And we need to actually flip it if it's on the wrong axis. So we're going to go ahead and just do that right now. Um, and also change the cell button. So I'll just expand every single one of these loot container. And this is where you you hope that you made prefab in the past, but you didn't because... You forget about these kind of things when you have a really long series going on. I'm going to be choosing every single button with the control click, like so. And we are going to go ahead and just start modifying the cell button. So as for the cell button, we can be putting, like every other buttons we have, we can be putting the UI Atlas, um, the first one. Then we change the swap sprite to UI Atlas 2. As simple as that. And alright, one more time, what we're going to do is choose all the convert up and convert down, since they are button as well. Choose them, we've got a total of 26 to select. And once we have the, all of them selected, we can actually go ahead and just uh, start playing with the icons a little bit. Not the icons, the uh, sprite. And here it is. Again, it's a button, so I'll just be using this guy. And um, sprite swap, I'll be using the other one. The UI Atlas at the index 2. And in terms of color, I don't know if I really want to change that color or not. I could, but I don't think it's actually needed. Uh, what we can do in, if, we, if we want to have some colors in there is we can change the icon that goes inside of it. Talking about these icons, let's actually choose the first guy up here, the convert up. And uh, the convert up is going to be, you're going to have to put a new icon on it. So convert up, right click, UI, image. Now that image is the arrow that we saw a little bit earlier. Um, so is this a convert up or convert down? I'm not sure actually, I think it's actually a convert down, but the name is inverse because in the code we actually put it up. It's weird, but on the UI, it needs to be down. So, to make this go down, we just put a rotation on it of 90 degrees, or I mean 180 degrees in a Z, like this. And of course, resize it the way you want to uh, actually see it in the end. So this is actually going to be fine, I think. And yep, duplicate that, put it in the convert down and put it on zero, 0, this time you can remove the rotation as well. And here you have it. So we'll be pasting all of these inside of, well, every single loot container. So this one is done. I'll just paste them in there, in there, and again, and again. 
and this is what we need to do for every single 13 of our loots. Alright, so whenever we did paste this, they didn't really go inside of the button, so that's a little bit messed up, but um, that's how Unity works. So what we're going to do is just, just go one by one. The image at the index one is usually the one that goes uh, in the convert down, I think. You can check by putting the position on 0, 0, 0 afterward. So as you can tell, I just drag and drop it in here, then position goes to 0, 0, 0. So this goes in down 0 and up 0. And we just keep doing that because we're having such a good time. And it's raining like crazy here and I actually like rain quite a lot. This is so peaceful. I could be doing this all day. Just a general question like that because it doesn't really make any sense and I'm trying not to buy time but I'm trying just to fill Yes, this commentary. Um, do you guys know where it's raining like all year round? I'd like to go live there. Apparently London is like that. That would be a good place to live. So are we almost done? No, we're not almost done. Let's keep going. This is so annoying. We should have made prefab in the past, but like I said earlier, I didn't really think ahead at this very moment. I don't integrate art quite a lot. I usually let someone else do that. I just code. But hey, tables are turning and I get to do pretty much everything now. Good times. Let's go in the game, actually have a look um, if everything works. I think we broke something, but we can quickly repair it. Okay, we didn't really break it, but uh, we need an actual state for this button whenever it's disabled, because right now I can't tell that it's disabled or not. So this works, this works, all the icons are there, and they are in the good order. Now, I still forgot to do this, I will go ahead and just do it right now. My bad. So, under the loot menu, loot panel, loot list, the fox is... Number 10, I believe. Nope, number 11. Here it is. Okay, so now how do we actually make sure that this is not visible? On the convert down, we have a disable sprite which is on nothing right now. What we're going to do is actually put it on UI Atlas, say, 4. Ah, uh, no, that's not going to work. So we need to actually put another button up here that's going to make make it hard to tell that you can click on it. So we, we might actually need to have another icon going on there. Um, for now, I'll just put it on the most opaque alpha so you can actually see it well. Now, same thing goes for the very last one on the convert down, I believe, or convert up. Is it down or up? It's actually... Okay, so it's convert up, and we'll be putting it on the most opaque alpha thing. Alright, so we should be good with the loot menu. Good thing done. We're almost done, guys. Just hold on to it a little bit, a little bit longer. Um, the ability menu over here, uh, of course we can do the usual thing, so we go up here, image. Okay, so yeah, we do keep that mask here, but we also keep the mask graphic, because that's the whole panel. Let's put it on UI Atlas 4, crank up the opacity again. And uh, we don't really need to put any colors in there, now that I realize, it just it messed things up a little bit too much. Alright, so abilities, ability container 1, thank you god, they are in a prefab, so if we modify one, we're going to be modifying everything. And uh, let's actually check this out, we are going to change the background of this to a super opaque thing, put it on a grayish color again. I actually like that setup quite a lot. 
So you put it on a grayish color, you can hit apply and as you can tell the changes are being reflected down there which is perfect for what we're trying to achieve. Now a vertical layout group of the ability list, I think we can actually add a padding here so let's do 20 or 15 on both sides and 15 on the top side as well. And oh there is something right here that I don't like actually messing up everything. Okay, so on our ability list we have a image that we're simply going to remove. Good times. Now ability container, we have the icon, that's good. We have the title which is going to change color. It is now white. Good times. Description is also going to be white-ish gray. Less important. Um, the use button is of course going to be using our new button stuff, so UI Atlas 0, we're going to do a sprite swap, highlighted, and here it is. We're getting used to all that kind of stuff now, hopefully. And it's just wonderful. Oh, what a good time. Um, we can also change the cost of it, the button message, my bad, to a more whitish color. Now go back on the first ability container, hit apply, and it should not have changed the icons, it should not have changed the actual link inside of the buttons, it should just work like we want it to work because Unity is smart. Uh, cheat button, yeah I mean cheat button, we're gonna remove it later on but right now it's just gonna do its thing. Alright so that's cool, that's cool, uh, that's also cool. Makes sense here, it also makes sense on this side. Maybe the font color is awful, but that's really up to uh, whatever we do with this. Nice, so we got a good thing done today. Um, and as you can tell, we did mess up a few other things, but we'll cover that in the future episode because this one is getting really, really long and I don't want to like stay here for ages and ages doing this. And my voice is running out, which is another thing. Um, so guys, thanks for watching. I'm going to go out now and enjoy the rain. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave me a like, really appreciate it. As always, if you have any comment or question, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. Other than that, please look at the Patreon page if you'd like to support me or the channel or this game. Or just general stuff that I'm trying to do. Alright, so um, again, uh, subscribe for more of you all like these. And I will see you guys in the next one.